Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena we are in the Demir color challenge, the blue-black color challenge, and our second standard deck is going to be Reanimator. Yes, Reanimator. Let's move some toys around. Discovery is usually cast for two. Connive, Concoct is usually cast for five. For Agent of Treachery. Yeah. Uh, so this is what I want to reanimate. This is a Blood for Bones value deck that uses Agent of Treachery to steal the opponent's best things. The deck lowers the greed count. It doesn't register some of those really huge creatures that some people like getting back, like Villas is one you see. Uh, Dracuseth in would be uh, in Grixis reanimator. Some people would play that. I could have played it here with no red mana to cast it, as that is okay by the rules of the color challenge. But I still don't think that's the right... I, you know, right is, a, right is subjective. It's not the way I like to play the Demir Reanimator build. What I like to do with the Demir Reanimator build is have a deck that is mostly a blue-black value control deck that can have a god draw where it starts reanimating Agent of Treachery on turn four and just steals all the opponent's toys. And that's what this deck is. It has some early removal like Disfigure and Tyrant Scorn. It has some powerful cards that are reasonable casting costs that you can just play, like Cavalier of Night and Massacre Girl, that you can get back multiple times with Blood for Bones. It's still very good. The early creatures that you would sacrifice to your Blood for Bones are and get back with Blood for Bones are value creatures, like Fipple Thib the Lost and the Tonebound Lich. And of course, if you have the agent and can throw it into your graveyard and reanimate it, you start stealing the opponent's things, which is the real end game of the deck. We take all the things that you love so dearly. You're going to see this, uh, hopefully, do beautiful things to all manner of permanents. I like stealing Okos. I like stealing Nissas. I like stealing the giant Hydroid Crazy. I like to steal your fires of invention and do nasty things to you after stealing it. In order to get the agent in the graveyard, we have Tonebound Lich, we have the Surveil from Discovery Dispersal and Thought Erasure, and we have Mass Rankle, the Master of Pranks. This is another example of just playing a good card instead of a self-mill card. Self-mill cards um, are fan favorites. Wall of Lost Thoughts is an example of one of these. Enters the battlefield, put four cards from the top of your library into the graveyard. People like this kind of thing, then they hope that they can throw their agent in the graveyard that way. I think this is just not a good enough card for what you're doing. Compare it to the Tonebound Lich with Death Touch and Lifelink, and you can see that this is a much better ball of stats, plus it draws you cards, lets you discard cards. Rankle does the same thing. It, when it hits the opponent, it, lets you, uh, it can make each player discard a card, which can be a good thing for you if you're dropping off your Agent of Treachery. And Rankle's just all in all so much stronger than the other ways to discard cards. Another thing I don't play in the deck are Sweepers. I, I, I talked about it in the last video, but I don't think cards like Ritual of Sid are where you need to be to compete in the format in this style of deck where everything is about being on the board and having tempo. And I do have a Massacre Girl. I wanted some way to catch up. So there's one Massacre Girl in the deck, and it can go a long way because if you find it, you can dig it up over and over with Blood for Bones and Concoct and things of that nature. So this should be a very fun game. I'm looking forward to stealing all of our opponents' hopes and dreams with Agent of Treachery as early as turn four. So let's dive in and let the nonsense begin. Okay, we're looking down at this opener with Thought Erasure, Discovery, Massacre Girl. It doesn't have a lot of the reanimator stuff going on. We'll hope we find that near the top of the library, but it looks like it can interact, maybe put up a fight not get run over. Looks darn fine. If I say so myself. So, we got a stomping ground from the opponent. And, of course, we are Demir. We must have double thought erasure. It is the way. Yeah, you gotta go. And then some of these other heavy hitters have to go. Oh, Tyrant Scorn isn't good against them either. How am I going to deal with these? Well... I can take the Hellkite with my next Thought Erasure. I can Tyrant Scorn to bounce something, and Massacre Girl can trade. We'll start with that. I guess I need to keep that. We do need land, but uh, yeah, we do not match up well against these hasty monsters. And our opponent finds Kroll Harpooner on top of their library. Well, they're not going to play one of these next turn, so we may as well use this to get rid of the Harpooner.
And we can play this tapped, and next turn Discovery can try to find us an answer to these monsters, and Thought Erasure can strip the hand. I think Gruul is a terrible matchup, but we will see what happens. It's all an experiment, I suppose. Opponent finds a Pelt Collector, takes a Pelt Collector, shocks, plays a Pelt Collector, which is a really bad thing to see when there's Questing Beast on the horizon. It won't be small enough for Massacre Girl to set off any kind of chain with it. In general, Massacre Girl is certainly outmatched here. Fibble Fib's small enough. Let's see. One, two, but not four. The Massacre Girl won't be big enough to get the Questing Beast, but I suppose we really do just have to make sure, and I mean absolutely sure, that we get something. So, draw you. Play you. Keep trying to get deeper here. Double Thought Erasure. So maybe next turn, the Questing Beast comes down, pumps the Pelt Collector, it hits me. Maybe I spend next turn double Thought Erasing and go really low on life, but I try to make sure that I kind of stabilize with the Massacre Girl. Tonebound Lich isn't bad. Has Death Touch. It also gives me the third Toughness card. Bone Crusher Giant is a three Toughness card. But the opponent won't target the Fipple Fib. If they target the Fipple Thib with Bone Crusher Giant, it won't do any good. So let's take their Hellkite. You can go. Let's. Ah, uh, they're gonna grow the Pelt Collector, though. Alright. Well, then we can't have that. Guess I have to take the Giant, which means there's still a Questing Beast when this is done, maybe. We can take a turn for Tonebound Lich, and then it goes all the way up the curve, but if the opponent draws anything in the meantime, we die to it. This is not good, to put it mildly. Let's see what the opponent draws. Down to eight. And pass, okay. I'm playing the Tonebound Lich so that Massacre Girl goes all the way up the chain so she can trade with the other Questing Beast. And hopefully the opponent holds back the Pelt Collector, doesn't play anything to, ki to pump it. All right, down to four. Last turn, Cavalier of Night. It's a pretty good one. I don't think the opponent will block the Tonebound Lich. They could. I don't think I should give them the opportunity. The fact that they could block it with the Questing Beast, then play another, means we'd die. So, all right, let's go, Massacre Girl. Slice and dice. Got him. Now we'll need something to sack to the Cavalier of Night, so that can pull me back into it. Or maybe we just play the 4-5. It's probably our best card against the Gruul deck. And here is the Beastie. You want to trade? No. All right. Get in there, Massacre Girl. We'll play the Cav of Night. And I do believe I'll just get this off the board so that a top decked Ember Cleave isn't the end of the game. The opponent might have another one. It makes sense that that would be stuck in their hand. The third questing beast. They usually run all four in this monster. Oh, but instead we have a scoop, and we played our way out of a foxhole in that one. Ooh, ugly hand. But if we draw a blood for bones, it reanimates the agent of treachery, but the mana is atrocious. We'll have to draw into a black source. Oof. I don't know. So, what we can do is Fable Passage for an Island, then the castle comes in untapped, then Fibble Fib draws two. If one of those two is a black source, the Tonebound Lich comes down and discards Treachery, and if then we find a Blood for Bones, we have turn four Agent. So this is a hand capable of doing the thing that the deck is designed to do. Let's give it a shot. Sometimes you have to take Sketchers, really sketchy hands, because it actually does what the deck is meant to do. Yep. Once upon a time for free. Just a beautiful look at my top five and pick only the very best possible thing and play it. And hey, Gilded Goose. Somebody came here straight from the Pro Tour. All right, let's go get the island so the Fipple Thib can come in with the castle. Well, that is 
probably even better. It gets us even deeper looking for black mana. And we found it. So that's nice. And now we're looking for more black mana and a blood for bones. So that's why we've been the other discovery. We really aren't looking for it. So discovery is our much worse, much slower, and much more terrible in every way once upon a time in this deck. We can it helps fix the mana so we don't have to run bad lands. And it's turn two Oko. Oh nice. Oh nice. I'm I know I'm supposed to concede right now. I might just try to play it out. Do we discard? We have this option where we could also kill the goose and draw. Or we could still be trying to do the agent next turn. It would need it would mean we have to have blood for bones and land as our top two cards in the library. Yeah, let's slow you down. This figure was in the deck for those turn one ganders, but uh, alas, what can we do? We did find another land. If the next card is blood for bones, I'll tilt. I'll tilt so hard. The opponent goes straight elk. No, I don't need to block. That's a tap land. That's another goose? That's obnoxious. All right, let's go get another black source out of the deck because we have Cavalier of Night. And let's try Oh, should have left up a black in case I drew a uh, disfigure. Massacre girl. Not bad. Drop off the agent. Now we're digging for reanimation. <laughs> Strictly pro plays from Moonu. Just turn to Oko, but by God, don't give me information with your fabled passage. I might use it against you. Let's broaden your existence. Welcome to the land of the elk. Um, one, two, three. Massacre Girl sweeps all this up. We can make a block here. Gain a life. Kill an elk. Here's a paradise druid. The opponent on three lands. Yeah, this is... This is gonna be a massacre. Let's do it. All right, now I'll see if the opponent can make more mana. As we try to get to seven, where Agent of Treachery can deal with this Oko, seven mana to deal with your card you played on turn two feels bad, but you do what you can. Your opponent finds a forest. They have something else. We drew the blood for bones. Our life is beautiful. All right, Massacre Girl. I want you to go over there and punch that Oko player in the face right in the face. Give them the business. Then I'll sacrifice you for the good of the land. And we'll get back our Agent of Treachery and we'll get back Fipplethib the Lost because we can play it this turn, draw a card and then we have something to sacrifice to a Cavalier of Night if we decide to do that. Gimme. Um, anybody want to be an Elk? Eh, Agent doesn't really want to be an Elk. Fibblethib could be a nice... Would you, you'd be a cute elk, wouldn't you? All right, the opponent might have Noxious Grasp. If I go to cast something, they'll Noxious Grasp this in response. So let's just make a food token right now. Welcome to the feast. <laughs> How many once upon a times? Three? Hype. All right. We're one land away from another Agent of Treachery. Our opponent with a little Hydroid Crisis, that is probably not what they're looking for. When you're on four lands and you're Hydroid Crisising. But if they draw land here, they can Nissa, which plays right into our hands. <laughs> oh, something else. Let's just hope I get to do this. If they play a creature here that we can target. We can steal it with Oko. Agent can steal something else. And then we draw six. It's <laughs> so evil. No, don't Noxious Grasp my Oko. No, I, I had evil plans for you. Okay, well, I'll just have to do them anyway. Hiya. Attack, send a message. 
They will not be intimidated. Opponent taking their time. Have another agent. I'm coming for your island. This is my island. My island. Braveheart, anyone? Anyone? No? Wicked Wolf, hello. And there is food. Rude. Opponent not finished with me yet. Good, because I'm not finished with them. Let's see what we can find with the castle. Cavalier of Night, Rankle, huh? Rankle's quality. Actually, both are really quality. <laughs> both are very fun. Uh, Cavalier of Night, not as great while the Wicked Wolf can be indestructible. But gonna be pretty great here. Uh, making the opponent sacrifice their Wicked Wolf with the hijinks and the ability. I could discard my Cavalier Knight, I hate that. Let's just draw a card and sack a creature. I think drawing a card is just fine right now. Out of there, dead wolf. Now if the opponent plays another wolf, they only have one food and their one food uh, can trade off here with the Rankle Master and then the Cavalier of Knight can take it out. Oh, we're shaking worlds now. I see. Let's not scry on upkeep. Actually, hold on. So, one, two, three, four, five. If I find a... I could find a Blood for Bones or an Untapped Land, and either way have a great play next turn. So yeah, let's upkeep scry. One, two, three, four. Resolve that. Thought Erasure, Swamp. Well, I guess I'm keeping the Swamp. Uh, the Thought Erasure is okay, but I don't think... I think the game is on the board now, not in the grip. So we'll draw this. Go to main. Um, Don't need to blow up that forest. I do need to blow up this Nissa, though, but I can't. Can't quite kill it. It's frustrating. Um, maybe I just start making the opponent's lands die. How does that sound? Oh, that sounds lovely. That sounds great. Let's do it. All right, so. Sacrifice you. Destroy you. We could also make uh, make it die with Rankle hitting the face, but this is just fine. Opponent still needs a blue for this Nissa, And the fact that they didn't fetch an island with the Fabled Passage means either they have another Fabled Passage or they only had the one island. One island is pretty low, but I guess it's totally possible for the deck. And let's lose life. Let's draw cards. No creature sacrifice this time. And Fibble Thib. Hi, how you doing, buddy? How's it going, little guy? We're just going to kill all of our opponent's lands. It's going to be great. We're either going to steal them or kill them. Everything's working. This is a beautiful life. Where'd your goose go? What happened to your turn two Oko hot stuff? Well, Mega Crisis time it looks like. We'll see if that we'll see if that pulls it off for you. I don't feel too bad about it if I'm being honest, but things could still go very wrong. Deck is insanely powerful. But if all the opponent plays is a Crisis here, well, it's big. And they went all in on it, too. That surprises me a little. I thought they would have left up a blocker. They have no time for that. This is eight damage. They're dead. All we have to do is remove the Hydroid Crisis. If they had left up a blocker, at least it would have been more complicated. Ooh, the BMs? Absolutely, it's Oko. We got turn two Oko this game. They can live through the BMs. What'd you draw? Wow, look at all these cards. I'm going to make your Liliana go the way. Go away. <laughs> Now, we'll go ahead and play Fipple Fib the Lost. Draw a card. Play Cavalier of Night. Sacrifice Fipple Fib the Lost. Destroy the Hydroid Krasis. Send the damage to your face. And use the Rankle's ability to lose a life. And draw a card. Phew!
All right, another party and a hand. Let's do it. Can go ahead and use the passage if we want here, but I'm worried about taking too much damage. Oh well, I'm over it. I'm no longer worried. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna hide. I'm not gonna know what's coming. Oh, it's a vampire. Okay. Um, black mana because of Cavalier of Night. Hey, just like that. Turn to Thought Erasure, like a pro. Like the good players do it. Oh my goodness. They're running Heraldic Banner Black. What a god. So I actually think the right take could be the Enforcer. It just kind of makes everything awkward. The Spawn, though... Spawn could be a real pain, too. We'll have the Tomebound Lich next turn to trade off with the Vampire of the Dire Moon. Then Rankle getting in is important. But Rankle doesn't matter if the Orozov Enforcer is there. So I think it's the Enforcer. And we see the Connive Concoct. I think I'll keep that. It could actually just gain control of the Vampire, but I'm not good. I, I don't have time for that. Four mana's a lot. All right, so we play you. We play you. We're probably discarding the Cavalier of Night or the Rankle. And I guess it'll be the Cavalier of Night here. So that we can concoct it back later. Now it's banner time. Rankle gets in. The opponent has to sacrifice their vampire, the Dire Moon. Then they play a spawn of mayhem. Ooh, they drew a murderous rider. Rude. Nothing I want to discard. Sacrificing the vampire isn't good. I guess I'm drawing here. I don't really want to give up my rankle for a vampire of the dire moon. I would have happily given up my tomebound lich. But not the rank master. Now we have actually the option of playing dispersal. Just bounce your bounce your spawn of mayhem, make you discard a card. Is that a play? Is that a real play? Rude. We got trouble. Yeah, we could bounce this hit and draw, but then the opponent comes right back at us with a lot of fire. If we get back the Cavalier of Night, it's a very strong card, especially if the opponent can't kill it, and it can kill the Spawn of Mayhem. I think that's the best play I have. As much as I love rank the Rank Meister. Don't need more of this, don't need this, don't need this. Sorry, sorry dude. You're out, you're in. And if we can take our opponent's whole turn blocking their Knight of the Ebon Legion here, I will. It'll get back a Tonebound Lich and keep the deck moving. We can probably find more things to reanimate with our discoveries and our thought erasures and our Tonebound lootings. Plus, it gains four life, which I like. And it takes pretty much their whole turn. Like, they have to invest most of their resources into this play. Yeah, the land can go. Let's keep moving the deck. And Foulmere Knight. Death Touch Tribal over here. All right, well, we know what two of the cards are. That's not particularly thought erasure proof. The last one is probably worth taking, or they would have played differently, I think. But let's start with a Discovery Dispersal. Another Cav, glorious. Well, yeah, we'll keep that. But not this turn. So, Let's do another Discovery Dispersal first, and then a Thought Erasure, I think, is the way that this goes. I'd also take a Disfigure here. There's a Fibblethib. Those can be in the yard. Hello. All right, now we're looking for land on top for the Agent. There's the Spawn, so it was a takeable card. Oh, there's a Disfigure. That can help me clean up this board, I think. So we'll keep that as well. The opponent's probably going to hold back their Knight of the Ebon Legion, but I think it's going to grow. Well, if they play a banner and hold back the Knight because they don't want to trade it here, we block one of these and we don't lose four, so it doesn't grow. So then Disfigure works. So this should be fine. The next turn we can Cavalier of Knight, crush something that way, Disfigure something, 
and wait for a land for Agent of Treachery. Yep, gain a life, do a damage, there's the disfigure. Hit the Knight of the Ebon Legion before there's the mana to use it. Drop a Cavalier of Knight on the opponent. The 4-5 lifelinking body, just fine right now. Opponent plays another banner. If the Falmir Knight attacks, I don't have to block here. I can attack back with the Knight. I could get back the Fibble Fib, of course, but I think that's better to gain, like the, the, the basic gain, the gain life, lose life with Cavalier is better, but maybe the opponent has another Death Toucher. They do. In that case, ooh, look at that draw. So taking my opponent's Death Touchers, not nearly as good for me. But I think we are in a battle of that type of resource. I could also take their castle, which is going to be a very grindy card here very soon. Yeah, let's offer the trade with the Cavalier first. This way, at least we get the life before our opponent draws a removal spell. And I'll take a Fipple Thib the Lost. Get me deeper in the deck. Trades well with the Falmir Knight. Yes. Yes, please. Give me this. Take away our opponent's card advantage source before that comes online. Murderous Rider, your agent. Interesting. And then slam the 4 3 lifelinker. It's pretty good. Fibble Thib can take on this knight. I wouldn't have made that trade if I were the opponent. Here's another agent. Do we start taking banners? This thing's still too big if I only take one banner. Yeah, we'll take your actual creature here. A little bit of life gain. Opponent plays another one. But now our scry and draw can come online. Oh, hi. That's not bad. Steal and sack, baby. Um, card in hand. How about Rankle? You seem good. Give me that. Now let's turn up the pressure. Um, we don't want to sacrifice a creature. We can lose life and draw cards, though. Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! The agent shenanigans go to work. Yeah, we just need a way to discard this and the and get a blood for bones. It's capable of doing the thing. It might get run over. We're on the draw, and our first play is a 1-1 one, one that draws a card. In current standard, that's not good. It's one of the problems with this deck. And if we're against red, we're going to need Tomebound Lich off the top and Cavalier of Night off the top pretty bad. Blood for bones is here. Okay, is it coming together? I'll be, I, I'm ready for my damage. Let's go. Light up the stage on two with a cavalcade revealed. There's probably another one drop here. Yep. The dream is coming together for the red mage. That is a card we needed very much. All right, we'll give it the try. We will make the effort. We will fight the fight. That is the Cavalier of Night. We're actually going to have a tough time figuring out if we want Agent of Treachery or Cavalier of Night in our graveyard. Now, miss a land drop. Give me a chance. Give me a chance. Let's block that and slow the damage down. And yes, they did miss a land drop. I think it's Agent of Treachery. I think we're stealing lands, friends. And now we need this to survive for a turn. Three damage isn't as easy as it used to be with Lightning Strike and Wizard's Lightning. Runaway Steamkin. Okay. Alright. Let's attack with the Tonebound Lich and get a life out of the deal and maybe a loot. Nice.
Go get another blue. Conceal the Cavalier of Night that's on its way. Here's the blood for bones. What do we do? I think it's the land. I still think it's the land. And you have a lifelink. You can come. Well, wait. If we steal the land, we go up to six. Yeah, I might also steal. I also might just straight up concive, con, con, connive that uh, Steamkin. So if we do that, the Fipple Thib makes sense. Give me that. I guess that was the tilting point. That was the tilting point. All your base are belong to us. Four and freaking one. House money. We're playing house money now. It's all gravy. This is a very controlly hand if we're against a red mage. If your hair is indeed on fire. You forgot the Chandra sleeves though. But if your hair is indeed on fire, our hand is pretty good. I'm just gonna play the... Hmm. Yeah, I want to be on curve if they are red. I just want to disfigure the first thing they play, then thought erase them without losing any tempo of any kind. Even if it shocks me. Or Gilded Goose is another example of a turn one card you just need to kill these days. Knight of the Ebon Legion. Yep, you win as well. Disfigure's shining today. Just shining out here. Alright, we drew the Agent. We're gonna need a way to discard it. And we look and we see Priest, Lazatev, Reher, Orzhov, Enforcer, and Rankle. I think it's Rankle. Rankle's the most powerful card here. The Priest we can zap. That will discard the Agent. I think our opponent will go turn two Priest. We'll kill it with Tyrant Scorn. We'll wait on the uh, use of it until after the opponent plays their Reaver because we want them to think that getting two creatures on the board is good. And before that resolves, I don't think they might sacrifice this just to draw a card and burn me for two. It's possible. So I'm just taking the option away in case that is what they want to do. Not giving the opponent an option is usually good if you're not sure. Uh, if you are sure, then trying to trick the opponent into using an option can be a good tactic. All right, am I discarding this agent? Draw blood for bones. Hmm. So this is awkward, right? Because I don't have a way to reanimate that agent. And I, if I discard it, I have all land in hand. Still, our deck does what it does, and I don't want to draw a reanimation spell with nothing to use to use with it, so you gotta trust it. I named the deck Reanimator. Let's not pretend like it's frickin' ramp control. Who does number two work for? So we know the Orzhov Enforcer. We don't know these other cards. We know Black Sacrifice. So we've seen the Rankle. We've seen the Knight of the Ebon Legion. These are probably the heavy hitters of the deck. There might also be Cavalier of Night and Liliana to think about. And our opponent's hitting their land drop. But there will probably be plenty of fodder along the way. Oh, we've got a Murderous Rider. And now we're down to nothing but land against the opponent's knuckleheads. And we draw Discovery, which I think we use... Well, since we might end up surveilling to the top, let's use the Passage first. But let's try to find those reanimation spells. It is time, for sure. Castle. I mean, Castle can help us find them. But I... Mmm... I hate using another draw on a land, though. Just to scry two more? I think we're gonna bin this castle. Ugh. Draw this Thought Erasure, cast this Thought Erasure, and keep digging. And try not to die. Ooh. The opponent would likely hold this Murderous Rider. They'd surely add the Orzhov Enforcer to the board. Orzhov Enforcer is also really good against our Rankle, but Rankle's not great against them anyway. They have a bunch of small things. The more powerful card is Murderous Rider. That's a card. That is a card we can take. It's a 4-5. or five. It makes me glad we took the Murderous Rider. Our opponent draws another Lazatef Reaver. <laughs> and an Enforcer. Alright. Well, we've got this card that blanks their board. Let's play it. 
We have nothing. We do have a Tonebound Lich in the graveyard that we get if it dies. And we have 42 cards and a deck full of reanimation jutsu. Iron Scorn off the top. That's nice. That is nice. The opponent decides to start attacking like a crazy person. The scoring can help. Like if you just start throwing your things onto the onto the onto the board. Um, but I don't want to use it on the enforcer, so we'll just have to accept that. I'll hold this. We might draw another tonebound lich, or we might get a tonebound lich back with the cavalier. Okay, the hits keep on coming. You know what would be nice? Massacre Girl. That is not nice. At all. That is a better draw than I've had. <laughs> Ooh. Do I bounce it? Buy some time? I think I have to. I could also wait one more turn. Ugh, it's so bad though. So there is a play where I can bounce my Cavalier of Night if I draw like a Fibble Fib, replay it to kill the Swan of Mayhem. But that's not enough. I don't have enough mana for that to even be an option. Yeah, this feels terrible. Opponent draw good, my draw bad. But this gives us another turn. Another turn to find the right card. Yeah, no blocks. Maybe I'm supposed to block there, gain the four life. This is so rude. Don't talk to me about deck thinning in the comments, you're idiots. Yeah, might do the math. No enforcer? Yes, enforcer. Okay, so here we block the enforcer because we want to get the lich and we want to find our massacre girl. Massacre girl. Wow. I am... Um, I'm not worthy. That just ha Did that really just happen? Alright, go get me a life. Hmm. Gang up on him, huh? Sure. Uh... You all die. I don't care. Wah! How you doing? I wonder if the opponent held anything back for this moment. This crazy moment. If they've been stockpiling any creatures. What else could they be stockpiling, right? Nothing else makes sense. It's freaking creature deck. Alright, Reaver. My turn. Trying to decide if I want to attack. The opponent has a gutter bones so they can get back. It feels like the Massacre Girl's on borrowed time. But at 17, the race is not in my favor. I think we're saying go. The opponent, if they attack me with both to try to get back gutter bones, I can disfigure one block the other. That's not good. Yeah. Yeah, that's a play you can make. Having the Massacre Girl on the battlefield, though, does make mean a Tyrant Scorn lets me play her again. Alright, off the top. It's a card. Ooh, it's a removal for that Aria. Hell yeah. Should have held that swamp. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Gotta read that. I, I believe Discovery was revealed too, but that is something that gets missed. I miss it. Um, eat you. Uh, if I disfigure this, nothing good happens. So, I guess I'm disfiguring the token and just leaving the opponent alone with the gutter bones. And, okay, we're still battling. Well, each opponent. I can't bounce my own Massacre Girl. I think we may as well surveil. 
All four discoveries. Blood for Bones. Cavalier Knight, Agent of Treachery. Seems good man. Um, save the Tonebound Lich for the draw. All right, crash in with the Massacre Girl. Blood for Bones. Sacrifice you. Get me... Get me the Cavalier of Night onto the battlefield. Get me the Massacre Girl in my hand. I know, I know you love Agent of Treachery. I do too. But Agent of Treachery on Gutter Bones is not inspiring. Agent of Treachery on the, like, seven land or whatever is not inspiring. Okay, I can wipe these out and get him for four. No, I can't. It would shrink my Cavalier of Night. Let's see what we see. It's just around the river bend with the Tonebound Lich here. Another land. And the opponent scoops it. I guess the value engine being online is too terrifying. I was going to probably go trade this um, Cavalier of Night with the Orzhov Enforcer and get back... I think there was another Tonebound Lich to try to keep the chains of events moving and keep the ad advantage going. And I can't fall too far behind as long as I have a Massacre Girl to play again. Wow, that ma that top deck Massacre Girl was one of my finest hours. All right, two losses, five wins. Back against the wall, let's see how it ends. Do we get to number six and possibly number seven? Or is RCX4 going to shut us down? <laughs> Just spam Fipple Fib. It's fine. This is fine. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You live by the homunculus and you die by the homunculus. Get the blue so that the castle enters untapped. Disfigure. One of the lower impact cards we could draw here. Agent, one of the higher impact cards we could draw. But nothing in between. Blood for Bones. Alright. Stuff is sort of happening. Let's see if we can play this. Trying to save life from a watery grave would be the only reason not to. And see if we can find a way to discard this Agent of Treachery. No. I... It's it's hard not to keep a blood for bones, but at the same time I need to hit my land, so I guess it has to go. This is not great. This is not going according to plan. We look like we may stall on mana even with thibs and discovery dispersal, but let's see what happens. Alright. So you're telling me there's a chance. I'm playing another one. Why? So I can blood for bones two of them. That's why. But I'll save the next one. As long as we're hitting land drops, getting closer to Agent of Treachery, it'll be okay. I don't know what we're up against. Or, this looks like the blue-black deck I uh, played yesterday. Never mind. It's Grixis. It's people who just never give up on Nicole Bolas. Grixis mages never give up on that crap. We're probably going to get our butt handed to us, but we'll see. Agent of Treachery re recurring over and over can be pretty hard for them to deal with, actually. We still haven't found a way to discard our lovely agent, but we can use the scry here rather than play another Fipplethib. So let's do it. We're probably about to face a Bolas, but we can discard the Disfigure. The important thing here is trying to set up agents as quickly as possible. I mean, that's really good against the Lost. Fires, cuz yeah. Duh. Alright. I mean, they're land, but I think I've gotta do better than that. That scorn does nothing. Fires is about to go absolutely crazy this next turn. 
I could play a Massacre Girl just to have something out here so the fires would have to deal with it. But then if that dies, my Blood for Bones doesn't do anything. But we're still at, like, draw land, play agent mode, I think. Yeah. If the Bolas has to minus to kill this, is that better than it plussing to deal with the Disfigure? I'd actually rather it plus so I can draw land and uh, steal it. So, yeah. Let's let the opponent do their thing. Uh-huh. Look at this champion of the game. What are we going to do with our beautiful fires of invention? Okay, this says I need to read this ability all the time. Spells and abilities but your opponent's control can't cause you to discard cards or sacrifice permanents. So, thought erasure rip. And it looks like our opponent stuffed Tamio in the deck with no way to cast it but the bacon, so good for them. <laughs> what a what a god. Alright. I guess we have to steal their fires of invention then? Then we can blood for bones and steal their Tamio. That sounds great. Alright. Give me the land. <laughs> really? Now you're not gonna give me the land? I guess we have to dig for it. Hey, I bottomed it, right? It's on me. Ha! Like a, like a god. All right. Taking your fires of invention. I am attacking your Narset with the Fipple Thib to put it out of range of being used. I'm casting Blood for Bones for frickin' nothing on my Agent of Treachery. And I'm getting back my Agent of Treachery, and I'm putting this in my hand. I'm stealing your Tamio. And I'm going to plus, and I'm going to find more agents. No, wait. I'm going to minus. And I'm going to get back another blood for bones. Good luck, sir. Good luck. <laughs> but, I, but my fair wishes, I was going to... I was going to fair wishes and stuff, man. All right. That's your first spell. That's your second spell. Good, good, good turn. Well done. Now... I will take your Narset off the board. I was not prepared for this. Blood for Bones. Sacrifice my agent. Get back my agent. Give me your fires. And now we can bounce my agent. Or we can do it again anyway. We'd have to give up the Tamio. Let's see what we can find with the Tamio. Maybe we can find another Blood for Bones. Or another Agent of Treachery. I think there's more of those in the deck now. Nope, not yet. Okay, so bounce my Agent. Erase my opponent. Let's erase my opponent. That sounds lovely. Two Phase of Wishes, a Narset, a Drawn from Dreams. These are really mana intensive. None of these kill the agent. With two Fey, it's not really worth taking one. Sahili can put tokens on the field. I don't really care. All of this is very stealable. I guess Drawn from Dreams goes the deepest. But it's the most tempo negative. It's actually a tough one. I guess Fey is really hard to steal. And it's something you can double spell with. Let's get it out of there. One of them. Uh, another castle should not be necessary. Which, by the way, I have Fires of Invention and Castle Vantress. I think I did the thing. I comboed so hard. So let's see if the opponent can paw their way out of this one. How about that Callous Dismissal? Is that a card you guys run in your Grixis Fires? I mean, it's an option, right? You can bounce your own fires when you have a million mana and too many spells. Might not be the worst idea. Just doesn't seem great. Ooh, we're casting the Drawn from Dreams with a floating red mana. Hmm. Hmm. Final boss. Final boss. Final boss. Final boss. Remember to check out CoolStuffInc.com. Promo code CGB5. 
Ninja Advertising. And thank you for sponsoring my channel. So, here we go. We can go get a black. We can play the bib. Rankle, if we have double black, can discard the agent. Yeah, this is where we want to be. Not getting stifled. That's an old reference. Don't worry about it. Wind, Scarred, Craig, gain a life. Not what I expected for the final boss, but let's see what's going on here. They've got the golden egg sleeves. This can't be an accident. Ooh, the curve is perfect. The draw is amazing. And it's Jeskai. More Jeskai, more fires? Looks like more fires. And there is a Fae of Wishes on the battlefield already, my friends. What on earth? All right. Here's my Tonebound Lich. Here's my agent in the graveyard. Your move, gamer. Your move. What you got? Be nice if I could steal a land that makes black, you know, from my rankle. Narset. I'll steal that. That looks delightful. Whiff? Lord Almighty. All right. I'll lead with the tome bound to the face. To get that loot. Whoa, deny me the loot. Throw away the fay. All right, I'm down with this. Blood for boneses. Sacrifice you. Is it better to take the land? It might be. I like that Narset. It's a nice Narset. I'm taking the Narset. If we find more blood for bones, it's so good. Meditate. No, we didn't. We did not find that. We found some pretty janky disfigures. I should have restarted before this game. You can feel the lag. Always turn four fires, right? Oh, Clarion. Okay. Another agent. Draw, Discovery Dispersal. The only thing I could find that would like make me sad that I played my land before the Discovery Dispersal is Watery Grave. So, and I, even then I'm not worried about the two life. There's the black that we need. You can be in the graveyard. Don't need you. And pass the turn. Scary turn coming up. We're still two drops away from the next agent. We have the Narset to take on any draw they have, and they have a Teferi. I, know I mean, you don't want to bounce anything here. This is just a plus, right? Has to be. Wow. You, wow. Do you not know how your Narset works? I, I make that mistake all the time. I'm just being I'm just being a jerk. Um I will have another card though. Thank ya. Rankle. I want you to go hit my that Teferi in the face and put some stank on it, please. I don't get the triggers, but a dead Teferi's worth it to me. Sarkin. And a dragon. But a blood for bones off the top. What do we do? I can steal that dragon and kill that Sarkin. That's easy. Why the heck not? Kill it. Smash it to bits. I would love to get to the point of stealing land. The opponent's done a good job putting out very tempting planeswalkers, though, so it's hard for me to have regrets. There's the time wipe. Sure. And now we go into land steal mode. To hardcast or to fipple thib blood for bones? I guess the blood for bones is the more value play, plus I have more plays after it. Potentially, if I draw a land, I get to recast the fipple thib. 
And we didn't. Still could. Leave up a black just in case this disfigure somehow does something in this game. Agent! Bip bib. And I guess we can start working on the red sources or the white sources. I have chosen red, as casting Sarkin can be hard. And here comes the fire. All right. Agent of Treachery shenanigans are ready to commence, sir. Narset returns. Now we have to remember not to try to draw a card with something like Fipplethib or Discovery until it's dead. Second fires. It's probably not what you're looking for. All right, this can be a black mana. I think we just want to get that out of the way. Boom. So the opponent had to spend their turn playing fires. We have an agent. We have two of our opponent's permanents. We can draw six cards by stealing something of theirs. That seems good. We can also land this Cavalier of Night or use a Dispersal. Yeah. Might as well. Remember, drawing a card won't work because of Narset, so we'll bounce our opponent's Narset, make them discard a card, just because it's a little bit of resource limitation. And then you're going to see our hand become an absolute monster on end step. And the Narset is gone. Triggers. So the Narset had to be gone there, too. That's the other reason to use the Dispersal, or we wouldn't draw these cards. And the opponent says, good game, and I don't blame them. This one, uh, this one got a little bit crazy. And it's looking like if they said good game and meant it, seven wins, Demir freaking reanimator. I hope you enjoyed it. this event with Demir Reanimator. It's another one that has run pretty long, so I will be running along quickly too. So I will just say that we've got one more standard deck for Demir, and I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.